contract tracing and provision of adequate personal protection equipment. The police requested for stronger cooperation between the Ministry of Health and the Uniformed Forces with respect to enforcement of COVID-19 regulations. The Minister of Health is also working with the Minister of Higher and Tertiary Education through universities and polytechnics to utilize incubation centers to spearhead innovations in fighting the spread of COVID-19. We have a report that one of those hubs come up with a mobile conduct tracing and test strategy using a mobile cell phone. On returning citizens, returnees by the 7th of July 2020, the number of returnees had 11,000 and coming from Africa, Asia, Europe, and with the repatriation supported by international organizations in, in, in particular the Organization on Migration, that is the UN Organization on Migration. The chairperson of the COVID-19 Task Force, Comrade Mwadi, however, noted that the task force had faced challenges of quarantine escapees numbering 194, but all have been traced successfully and, should I say, recovered from wherever they were. The meeting recommended that government must continue to upgrade our hospital facilities, in particular intensive care units in our hospitals, particularly metropolitan cities where more people are being hospitalized. We had um, an outbreak of diarrhea in Blawai City, and we took note of a setback in Blawai, where diarrhea outbreak was recorded leading to several cases. We were, however, satisfied by the interventions being made, which have seen water supplies improving, particularly in Ruveve, the most affected residential area. We also uh, should be uh, satisfied and happy that there were no links, no linkage between the outbreak and COVID-19 patients. On COVID, on arrest of COVID-19 regulation violators, with regard to face marks, over 1,600 persons have been arrested for violating this regulation. We encourage members of the public to observe the requirement to put on face marks seriously, and the law enforcement agent should intensify the enforcement of this regulation. We were particularly saddened that um, visits to Mbari seem to indicate a complete disregard of the provision requiring that they wear uh, face masks. Uh, both at the Musika and generally uh, in, the, in the suburb. Uh, with respect to opening of education centers, schools and universities, the task force has all they go ahead for the opening of education centers, that is in primary schools, ahead of the 28th of 2020, following the observation of COVID-19 state guidelines. So there have been guidelines issued to guide those who are going to open education centers, where schools and institutions such as the authorities that they are going to comply, they can open ahead of the 28th July 2020. Universities and other institutions of higher learning have also been given the green light on condition that they have made the required guidelines. The same equally on the tourism and hospitality sectors. We are trying here to balance the need for earning livelihoods and keeping the economy running and also the need for safety and prevention. And where we are satisfied that prevention uh, guidelines have been put in place, I think we should allow economic activities to take place. Also, the meeting commended the task force on COVID-19 for a splendid job 
well done thus far. The meeting also noted, as I've already mentioned, that Mbaka's potential hotspots because of the violations of COVID-19 regulations obtaining there. The meeting called for unity to succeed in the fight against the spread of COVID-19 aligned with the presidential lockdown on, di on the directive. Uh, the Commissar on my left presented quite a lengthy report on the state of affairs uh, in the party and in the country. Um, I wanted to preface my remarks by saying ZANU-PF has two eyes. All of you, when you sleep, you shut all your eyes. ZANU-PF does not shut one of the eyes. It sleeps with one eye open. So we remain vigilant against the machinations of the enemy. And they have been very intensified in recent weeks. So we noted regrettably the continued weaponization of social media to vilify government, the party, and the first family. Being photographed with you does not mean that when you go out to commit murder, I was an accomplice. I think I need to make that very clear. The president is on many occasions while receiving gifts on COVID, been photographed by people. Now, what they do out there cannot be associated by virtue of being photographed with His Excellency. And this goes for all of us. We should never be associated with criminal elements by mere effect that they cause to be near us and to be photographed. I want to make it clear. The verification, which has no factual basis, shows the of hostile forces and foreign interests we, who have placed regime change a priority despite our efforts to re-engage. Uh, clearly, it is very clear to us that uh, our interests uh, fueling fighting, uh, the proposed demonstration on the, on, at the end of the month and also uh, being, being very active on the social media to vilify and undermine the government and ZANU-PF. So sadly, we are being understood, misunderstood to think that when we, we want to re-engage, it's not from a position of weakness, as His Excellency has already said. It is because we believe international solidarity, which was very key to our mounting the armed struggle. We depended very much on international solidarity, and we believe sincerely and genuinely in international solidarity. So when we engage, it is to build international consensus and solidarity against colonialism, against imperialism, against interference in the internal affairs of our something that we condemn very strongly. Sadly, these attacks are spoiling the good name of the country and its leadership on the global scale. This is to stop and stop forthwith. It is very clear that the EU is a regime change agenda, a priority despite our efforts to re-engage. We have not a use of the same social media platforms to plan and organize for violent demonstrations overthrowing our constitutionally constituted government. Let me say this. Chamisa and those who are calling for demonstrations at the end of what happened on the 1st of August 2018 will never happen again in this country. What happened on the 14th to of January last year at Attacking will never happen. We sent this warning loud and clear. And we said to Shamisa and those who are like me, don't be caught that you were on the face of August in 
or on the 16th of January last year. You are never to be found. You are in your house. If you do whatever you are threatening to do, come in front and face the music. We have our cadres are ready to take up and to take on anybody who attacks them. ZANU have members have the right to defend themselves. You will not sit idly by as we did from the 14th to the 16th. We do not sit idly by. We have a right to defend our homes, our persons, our property. And we will do just that. So please send out that warning loud and clear to Chamisa. He should not be the coward that he has been. Let him go in front and will face it. We have also noted that those doing so must stand warned and the law will not hesitate to deal with those. Our democracy and rule of government is constituted. The meeting advised the planning to sneak themselves into government violently through the back door to from such devious agendas because they themselves to blame. We had an election in 2018. It We have a two-thirds majority in parliament and we are going to be in charge of this country for the remainder of the term of mandate. And any right to threaten us, intimidate us, we are not amenable to intimidation from any court. That must be clearly understood. The also noted that there is the cases of corruption happening in local authority, especially those called by the opposition in Harare and Chitungwiz, where MDCA councillors are parceling out land illegally. With that, without any iota of regard to process. The same notorious city councils created their own version of a new normal. You know what the new normal is in all urban councils controlled by MDC? The new normal is that sewage should pour out and people live side by side with sewage in all the residential areas. Service delivery, no attention given to water, no attention given to sewage disposal or to refuse disposal. That is the kind of uh, rule that the opposition knows about. And he said to the people of Harare, all those areas who have voted for the position. Can you, why do you vote for parties to oppress you? Why do you vote for parties so that they give you poor service delivery? You continue voting for them irrespective of the fact that you have no water. Right now, it's the central government that is to intervene in all local authorities which are controlled by MDC to put balls. No, that is the responsibility of authorities. It's not the responsibility of central government to collect refuse. It's not the responsibility of local government to provide for sewerage pipes. That is the responsibility of local authorities. What is very sad is to note a people in these local authorities continually voting for the very people who will cause them cholera and typhoid. So we call upon these authorities to take action in dealing with crisis. We have seen the emergence of settlements fronted by fresh crop of land barons and baronesses connected to the opposition circuit. And they are so fraudulent. When they do it, they pretend that they are coming from the ruling party. It is not true. We have no PMS who are engaging in land barons 
we have no ZANU providers occupying land legally. If there are any doing so, we call upon the law enforcement agent to arrest them without reference to anybody. Please, they should be. The party also resolved to remain vigilant and watching moving forward, knowing fully well that the enemy is not sleeping. The enemy is not sleeping. Zapiev, let me tell you this, we are also not sleeping. In the next uh, couple of weeks, we should, you should get to know that Zapiev is not sleeping. And those who are applying to the end of month demonstrations should know Zanupiev is not sleeping. Thank you for warning us. This time, while we were sleeping with my eyes, we will sleep with both eyes open. The political welcomed the decision to eject old mutual from the financial system of this country and the closure of EcoCash agents who had caused runway inflation through illegal parallel exchange market rates. This will be followed by stabilization of the financial sector in the macroeconomic environment. As you are aware, uh, the auction system is started to sell auction, uh, to, to auction foreign currency, and we believe that over time we will get to an equilibrium where the ability of the, of the exchange rate and also there will be stability of prices that we clearly are sure will happen. Uh, we also commended the, that is the political meeting, also commended the programs of FUZA. Uh, this is a good program that is aiming to achieve productivity by people with minimal resources, people with minimal resources especially our communal peasant farmers. They don't need to have sophisticated equipment uh, or to have cattle in order to farm through the farm foods uh, program. So we, we are very happy that this program has been launched and the launch is working very well. We, our party strikes the commissariat, the women's league, the Youth League and the World Veterans League are participating fully in raising awareness of this program uh, to, the, to, the, to, the, to, the, to the people. As a mass party, we must always remain and we do remain with the people, notwithstanding the challenges that we are facing. Let me say this, there is no other party that is people-centered as we are. All other parties are fabricated, manufactured. We all know their origins. And up to now, you get leaders of the opposition right to the IMF, to the World Bank, to demand that sanctions continue, to demand that the, those institutions should not avail credit facilities to their own country. They are not working for the interests of the people. They are working for the interests of those people who are funding them. It's only Zanupi works for the people of Zimbabwe. The party also on philanthropic work. We express our gratitude to the philanthropic work being done by Amai Munangagwa, the first lady, uh, under the uh, Angel of Hope Foundation, which has several interventions to address challenges faced by our people during these COVID-19 pandemic times. We also must commend, and the party committee also, the Murefu and Muduri Foundations uh, we, for their charity work and philanthropic work where the organization are providing relief aid to vulnerable groups during these trying times. 
We also discussed pending by-elections. As you know, there are several by-elections arising from the recall of uh, what is happening in MDC. Uh, there, are, there are, as you know, it's a splitting party. Uh, it started as MDC, then they said MDC Changirai, they need to split MDC Changirai, MDC Welshmen, it mutated MDC Changirai, and then Kupe, and then Sikala, and then uh, BT, and Mutambara. Then they come again. When they come again, they start splitting again. That is the phenomena of this opposition. It, that this nation will not empower and trust lives into the hands of a splitting organization which knows which does not know where it is going there's no policy except to say Nangagwa must go no other policy no other policy to say ah, no, Zanu PF must go what they, they will be given power no we will split that I think is the clear message which when, when we split because the objective is not to govern the people the objective is to make money. They are representing the interests of foreigners. So we are taking steps to this by-election and we are taking steps to prepare ourselves to contest and win. We are only waiting for ZEC to give us a signal whether they will undertake these by-elections during lockdown or not. Uh, Ready. Applauded the Women's League for its healing work in fighting the spread of the 19 through its awareness campaigns. That is the end of the press statement. I will welcome questions. Let me see five for six. Five and six. Yeah, my, colleagues here, my colleagues here will assist me. So the floor is open for questions from you. Thank God today we can get to this community. <laughs> uh, journalist. So the floor is yours to ask questions. Please feel free. Matema Danda is there. Uh, Comrade Chenda Ishirao from the East is there. Uh, Comrade Bima is there. Uh, and of course, uh, himself, the man himself, the spokesperson is there. Free to ask your questions, empty your chest. This is an opportunity when they are still there. Yes, young man. that question, we, we will never tell you what we are going to do. Don't you want to so that you can counteract what we are going to do? No, we don't do that. All I can say is what happened on August 2018, what happened on the 14th to the 16th of January last year will not happen again. As to what we are going to do is our secret. So, you rest assured not happen again, that's the key. Just know it will not happen again. We are not here to discuss it. Uh, another question to any of the panelists. Yes, speak aloud. We can't hear you. Yeah, come closer, Jim. Just come. <coughs> Yes, I, I believe so. What I think the government is doing, and I can be corrected, what the government is doing is to come up with guidelines sector by sector. For instance, if we are talking about the education sector, if we are going to open a university, the, 
government and the Minister of Health will come up the task force with guidelines on what should be observed and complied with so that it does not endanger the opening, reopening does not endanger the, uh, the lives of those students and uh, staff. Uh, let me also say this which I omitted the statement. There is concern of course of the spike that is taking place in the infections. But more particularly concerned is concern is for the import measures. Now, all along there were imported cases. Now there are local transmissions. And now with local transmissions, they are more difficult to, uh, to, to control. Because we then require to know whoever we find locally who says, I never traveled. We now need to know who else did he come into contact with so that we can do conduct tracing. So each sector is going to come up with guidelines. And if the institution comes to the task force and says, these were your guidelines, this is what we are going to do to comply with your guidelines to be permission to reopen. Well, we didn't discuss, in fact, we, it was mentioned, and the concern over uh, the spike was quite clear, but we left it to the government, to experts, to consider if they need to, that is up to them, on the basis of what is happening, free to come up with views, whether to listen or to listen, uh, or to go into other things and so forth. That is entirely a, a expert, and we leave that entirely to government. I think this is the fourth question, probably the last one. Yes, please. Uh, I, I'm not very clear what your question is, is saying. I'm not very clear. As you know, all strategies to stabilize the economy are the responsibility of the government. As a party, we, would, we call upon the government to stabilize the economic situation. The unstable increase in prices upon the government to stabilize. Condition exchange rate now we are very clear and we are very convinced that while the economic fundamentals are correct barring the impact of COVID-19 the economic fundamentals are correct but there are players uninvited players within the sector within the industry who are manipulating certain factors in order to destabilize the economy so the demand we are making to government is that they identify those saboteurs. So far, as you are aware, there is clearly indicated that the eco-cash agents, not the eco-cash, you know, there was some misinformation that the government has banned eco-cash transactions. Eco-cash transactions are still taking place. What has been banned are eco cash agents who are manipulating the system to their advantage. With some cases we are, which are being reported, someone in Zwarasekwa having in his wallet something like 60 or 80 million and he has never worked in his life. Those are the people we have to track up. The responsibility to do that is the government law enforcement agents. There is also, of course, manipulation about, uh, from the foreign forces. There is clear manipulation based on agitating for demonstrations and the more violent the 
they give the money, you know, uh, those again, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, we have, at some occasion, called upon the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to uh, engage those foreign embassies which are embarking on that exercise, internal uh, interference in our internal affairs. So, uh, as to the others which are necessary to stabilize the economy, it's access to capital, access to international capital, which the opposition is preventing. We have no control over that. We cannot engage, but we have no control. We cannot tell you by when the sun will be lifted. We cannot tell you by when they will be able to the World Bank, African Development Bank, uh, IMF, and credit facilities, which we are entitled to get because we are members of all those international organizations. But right now, countries which impose sanctions prevent us from accessing that capital. on the issues that uh, the spokesperson of the party has hinted will not happen. I think he has given direction, um, especially on the likely demonstrations that uh, uh, it won't be the old normal. And uh, this uh, should serve as a warning and also as direction. People must stay in their houses, go for the normal work, and just ignore calls um, uh, for demonstrations. Otherwise, um, like this person has said, we are quite aware that uh, there are some foreign forces that are now bent on a on championing regime change, but uh, Zimbabwe did not come on a silver plate. We are ready to defend it with whatever demands. So let them come, we'll be their host. You have heard it from the leadership, the men, the men. It will not happen, and if ever they do, they are ready to be. They must be ready. Thank you very much for coming to address this Thank question. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Uh, this is the end. Thank you.